Dakar, the deadliest of races, where boys become men, where courage faces the grueling desert, where skill meets the deadly frozen wastes, and where number eight, Bill Hippopotamus, treats my car like true magnetic north, and I'm a friggin' carrier pigeon. Subscribe if you like reviews for video games. Check out the other videos. Check out my AI reviews where I let AI review video games as well. It's probably better than these. Let's begin. Dakar Desert Rally is from Saber Interactive and coming out soon on the PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Dakar is a unique type of race, one thing to remember, in larger open areas that rely on co-drivers and their instructions as well as GPS to identify that you got to the spots that you need to for the waypoints. With well over 100 races spread across a ton of terrains and driving all kinds of vehicles, from trucks to ATVs, motorbikes, sport trucks, and buggies, you fight against the clock and many times against others on your way to the podium. Remember that Dakar is such a friggin' rough race. When you win, you get handed a trophy that looks like a necromancer to remind you just how lucky you are to be alive. While the game still requires insanely fast reflexes depending on the vehicles, Dakar at times is more like chess, moving and seeing others' moves consistently, sometimes skipping a dangerous checkpoint and eating that momentary penalty because you know that there's a dangerous hidden rock in the grass right nearby. It's a fascinating style of racing and has always been one of my favorites. And the game truly has a ton of content. Races unlock as you perform more of them and you get experience points. Some modes can unlock in the higher experience levels as well. At first, you can choose two difficulties. One that gives you visual alerts and shows you the route as well as where the next waypoint is. The other drops most of those visual reminders, requiring you to pay more attention to the co-pilot or your own map book, which you can find in the cockpit views of any of the vehicles. Races can be a couple waypoints or dozens of them with tons of ways to get each one. And these expand as you go up in level. Learning a race and where the spots are let you experiment with taking lines that look out of the way but aren't. However, the game is also filled with dangerous environments, so that spot that looks like a sure thing might hide a rock that sends you flying into the trees like a friggin' missile. That's the sport of Dakar. That's the juice, is the ability and flexibility that the driver can continually demonstrate. The game's heavy on the endurance element as well, meaning damage is tracked across many categories. Damage to the body, the suspension, electrical, mechanical. Each can be repaired at waypoints in trade for any money that you've got from races in the past. You can also go in and and individually repair any small point that you want to do as well if you don't want to repair the entire category or all of the vehicle in one go. And that may make sense because repairing costs time. It's like having a bunch of those friends with pocket Leathermans who whip them out with a snap because they saw MacGyver do it. But here it works, instantly getting you back up and running, but taking some of that time once you end up going to the final checkpoint. With each win, you can unlock more money to buy more cars and continue on more races. But I got to point something out here. The game builds itself as a simulation and true to Dakar, or at least tries to, but it's also got a great deal of arcade. And the way it deals some of this out is a little confusing. For example, when you start races in the lower difficulties, many races start with a bunch of people in the starting section, and it is a clusterfuck. Smashing into anyone and everyone with huge crashes at the start being the norm and not the exception, which is dramatically not like normal Dakar, at least at the startings. The higher difficulty isn't unlocked until you've raced a ton to get them unlocked. The middle one, which does allow for you to separate a little bit more, means that newcomers who want to jump in get this weird and awkward kind of race type that isn't like Dakar, nor is it completely different from it. It's like a niche within a niche. It's just something you should be warned about because it can get a bit grindy, especially if you want to jump in as a newcomer and still see waypoints, which is probably one of the things a lot of people are going to jump in and want to see when you're at that lower level difficulty and you need 25 levels to unlock the main race type. This also means that if you're seeing the location alerts, you grind for that XP and it seems to be inelegant at the very least when it comes to offering it to you, especially for a game like this that probably could have allowed a little bit more situational awareness for your options to raise and lower the XP that you get. Now, these games are made and broken by their AI, and honestly, even after 25 hours, I can't tell you if it was made to be broken or if it was broken and how it was made, but it's still a blast. I've seen entire wharves be fought with less aggression than the AI in this game has. Shooting out of the center of two ridges completely alone, barreling down the back 40 of some snowy mountain, and then without hesitation, someone on a motorbike smashes into me like a goddamned missile with accuracy NASA would pay millions for. I'm pretty sure it was chanting Kumte like the crowd in Bloodsport. Now, the devs have stated they wanted wild AI so that they can crash like normal people on their own, and that's awesome because they do, and I love that. It does 
does make it sometimes feel like the AI is a little brain dead because you'll see them crash into a tree and it's the only tree there. But then two seconds later, you do the same thing. So it's not too hard to sort of understand. It's that many times those crashes are into you. And yes, you do see them aiming at you a lot. It's not the bumps and slams don't happen in the car either. It's just that many times the game doesn't seem to know exactly what it's trying to do. It's filled with content, massive staged events beyond 40 minutes. It's got a ton of cars from various to cars, and you can adjust settings to dial in the control, suspension, tires, and a good deal of other things. And it is, without a doubt, very enjoyable. But that AI does make it feel a bit wonky. Now, the best part of the game is the feeling on the ground and the control, and that is super important for a title like this, especially because you have so many different styles of experiences, vehicles to drive, as well as locations you're going to be in, and add weather on top of that. Also, Dakar has multiplayer, including private lobbies, public games, and set races with or without bots for you to get to know any of those tracks better and get to know them you probably should. Feedback to the player is vital for every racing game to feel unique. Every divot, bump, lump, hang time, and slide across the bottom of a gravel ravine feels pretty goddamn good. It's got settings to control the rider weight on ATVs and motorbikes to bite into turns or let the back end spin out to do a quick 360. And you can turn that off and on if you don't want to have to worry about it. It supports a number of wheels at this time as well. One of the biggest strengths of Dakar Desert Racing is that despite the issues with the AI and some others I'll mention in a second, I was nail biting to get back into a race to figure out the next turn to see if I could sneak through two rocks in a shortcut that looked dangerous close together, but would have given me five to 10 seconds bonus. Case in point, I wasn't able to. The presentation in Dakar is another part of it that I really liked, but it's also a little bit of a mixed bag. First, image stability overall, once you get into the races, for the most part, is excellent. There's very little pop-in while in the races. It's very good. There's also different weather systems where you're terracing out of these out-of-the-way places from desert dunes to snowy mountain sides as you fight off enemies all around you. It looks phenomenal at those spots. Even more so is the destruction on the vehicles. Watching both your front wheels explode off the front of the truck like Sidewinder missiles flying into the gray space of some horrible Russian winter is insane. Cars crumble, parts fly off with each hit, and the destruction system is damned good with parts not always falling off and occluding vision at any different time and you having to switch between views to sort of figure out exactly how you're going to continue. Lightning's also excellent as well. Most of the weather effects like freezing edges on the windshields, the snowstorms are so heavy that the fog and the mist and the snow make 10 miles per hour seem like 100 when you're ripping down a valley. Those are when the game is at its best, but it also has some weird issues here. First, while the particle systems are great for the most part in a lot of the races, in a couple locations, dust billows around like a thousand Tasmanian devils are spinning in place instead of a larger particle system, making those parts look ancient in their delivery. Also, the game has some FPS drops as well as tear that you should see here in my example video on the top edge of the screen during some of the busier races. This was checked throughout the Xbox Series X's versions and resolutions. Sadly, currently, my card that I use can't capture VRR. I'm using a secondary card, but I can say that overall, if you set this to the performance mode, it still looks very good, and those tears are at the very top of the screen in those situations. And as I continued to play, I did start to ignore those issues. It's absolutely beautiful a great deal of the time. You're flying across the dunes on your quad, which requires weight balancing to make sure the back end's bite and the front ones don't bite too hard, or you're going to skip off the ground like a friggin' children's rock on a pond. I enjoyed that. The destruction looks great. The weather systems are for sure truly impactful and make impacts on the trains themselves. Some of the trains, especially when it's raining, can look a little detail low when it comes to the textures, but it still was a fantastic looking game for the most part. And I really did enjoy exploring and checking out all the different locations. And every new race was a new experience and something that I wanted to try out with all the different vehicles. Because one thing to remember, especially in Dakar, different vehicles will be able to do different things in some of the terrains and maybe find you a shortcut you didn't find before. While playing the game, I didn't have any crashes, but I did have this. Yes, that's me jumping so high, ended up in the helicopter with another vehicle flying around the helicopter. Never seen that before. Also, they've decided to have some free DLC as well, which is extending the Saudi Arabia map and a roadbook editor and some free Rome modifications with team customizations coming in early 2023. They also do have a season pass system for this if you want to look at it. How does all this sound, though? 
Audio is important, and the game hinges a great deal on audio. Much of that due to the consistent alerts from the co-pilots telling you the next location of a waypoint and what hazards are coming up, but also just hearing the vehicle itself. You can adjust all sorts of level of audio as well as focusing the game's audio on the vehicle, which I like. It makes engine problems a little bit more easy to hear, especially when you've damaged the vehicle a little bit and you're trying to decide, do you want to repair it, but you don't want to jump into that screen, and you can hear if you're hitting top speeds. The audio is fine with most of the vehicles, sounding at least somewhat correct depending on the settings you do choose. The heavy low-end thunder of the trucks versus the high-speed top-end whine of enduro bikes make it easy to even guess who's behind you or coming up on you as they pass in a straightaway. And the voice lines are typical co-pilot voice lines, which means sometimes unintentionally hilarious. As you're rolling, the co-driver will politely say, let's try to not do more damage to the car. 34 rolls later, he says it again. I submit to you that on roll two, that plan was out the friggin' window, and on roll 34, it should have been glaringly obvious that gravity and I were not in total agreement. I did like the sound of this game. There isn't a lot of music that plays, and that's because of the way that I focused all of the audio on the cars themselves. Does all this come together as fun factor? Dakar is a game with some noticeable issues, issues that can be frustrating, especially when you realize that Dakar has to be a word translated from the original meaning of friggin' blood sport, rip snorting across a desert and questionably constructed four wheeled hell rockets and having someone try to split you in half with a motorbike can be frustrating. But winning by a margin in milliseconds is racing at its best. And that also happens here. I don't like the unlock system, especially as it leaves a gulf for players where newcomers get the worst of the AI situation and those who already know Rally may not get some of the other settings that they want. Also, an easy fix for the lethal AI, at the very least, would have the starts give you five to seconds of invulnerability in the lower difficulties, a little bit like what happens when you restart at a checkpoint. I think that that would be a very good thing and keep a lot of that early initial wrecking to a minimum. That's a lot to take in. And so is Dakar. Here's the thing, though. Despite those issues, it is a blast. Despite getting hammered into a rock, watching my character fly into the sky like a watermelon in an ancient weapons documentary on the Discovery Channel, I found myself leaping back in again and again and again, and still even now. The flexibility to choose how you take on locations isn't as wide as real Dakar, that's for sure, but there is a lot of choices here and a lot of different ways you can attack every single race. And picking apart a race and really defining which way you want to go and how you want to take it can be the difference between a low horsepower machine winning a race and a high horsepower machine actually losing it. Racing games are a mix of fidelity and control and perfect results from trained inputs, and Dakar has all that. And a game that makes me want to keep coming back despite its issues is a strong game regardless. For fans of Dakar, you get a lot here with a couple caveats. For those new to it, you get the same. But regardless of what kind of consumer you are, it's unique, and that does count for something. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system. I say even with the caveats, if you're looking at this game already, you're probably either very interested in Drakkar or you're somebody who actually likes it already. You, as long as you know these things I've said in the review, will probably be happy with this game. I could foresee a possible performance patch at some point, especially on the consoles, and the PC version wasn't really ready for the review at the time that I was doing it, so that's why I did this on the Xbox Series X. It looks awesome, it was enjoyable to play, and I gotta tell you, I'm gonna continue doing so. They have a ton of races, they have DLC coming, and this is a title that I could see them just continuing to build. But what's already there is a blast to play, and there's a ton of it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Comment in the comments section if you're getting this game, what are the games you're looking for in the rest of this year, and stay tuned. I've got a bunch of stuff, including more AI reviews, as well as some previews and reviews coming up in the next couple days. Also, if you've subscribed and you're not getting notifications, unsubscribe and subscribe again. And thanks to everybody who's joined Patreon as all of these videos are either getting demonetized or adult rated. It really does actually hurt the channel. And so those people who've jumped in with support as members here, as well as people in the patron, you guys absolutely rock. Peace out. Stay on Tracy. Attention, approaching speed limit zone 30. Two kilometers. Attention, approaching speed limit zone 30. Prepare to turn right. Start of speed limit. Keep left. Cap 202. Bump.